New at four, a federal judge makes a decision about five suspects charged in a terror plot swirling around Governor Whitmer. We'll have the very latest. Fighting for swing states, and Michigan is one of them. Joe Biden is here right now, while President Trump targets seniors in another key battleground state. Here's Paula. As the COVID numbers go up in Michigan, a local survivor says he'd be hopping mad if he only had the strength. He has a challenge. If you have the strength to listen to a story. And welcome to Friday, my friends. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Right on time, we've got a few showers around, and tonight, temperatures dip again, a frost advisory overnight. More on this in your weekend forecast, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Hi there. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kimberly Gill. First at four, five men will stand trial in a plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer. A federal judge in Grand Rapids ruled this afternoon there is enough evidence against these suspects. Two of the during the two day preliminary hearing, investigators told the judge they relied on informants and undercover agents to uncover the plan to abduct the governor. Today, defense attorneys questioned whether the men were just big talkers who didn't intend to go through with the plot. The judge agreed to move forward with a conspiracy to kidnap charge, citing claims the men performed nighttime surveillance of the governor's vacation home in northern Michigan. The five men face life in prison if convicted. Today, that same judge ruled Hartland's Ty Garbin will remain in custody leading up to trial. His attorney argued because there's no video to go along with the audio from the FBI wires, you can't tell if Garbin was objecting to the plot. Bond was also denied for the four other men this week. A sixth man from Delaware is being brought to Michigan to face charges. One of the men accused of helping in the plot also appeared in state court today. Pete Musico is facing charges that include threat of terrorism. Investigators say he lived at a home in Jackson County that was used as a training ground. Musico is a co-founding member of the extremist group, the Wolverine Watchmen. He's part of a group of eight facing state charges for wanting to ignite a civil war. We'll have more on this whole story coming up on the News at 5. We're getting a look at the man charged in connection with a drunk driving crash that killed a child in Waterford. Trevor Duncan Taylor was arraigned from his hospital bed via Zoom. He's facing several charges, including reckless driving and operating while intoxicated, causing death. Police say Taylor was speeding down Airport Road when he hit another car. A six-year-old girl died from her injuries. Her father remains in serious condition. Taylor is due back in court later this month. Given recent numbers, it seems the state of Michigan and much of the country is at a coronavirus crossroads. Can we fight off a new wave of infections? Well, today, Michigan is reporting another 2,000 new cases. Now, that's down slightly from yesterday, which was called a one-day record, but that number was inflated a bit by late test results. The state also reports 14 additional deaths. Pfizer hopes to apply for public use of its potential vaccine in the third week of November if all goes well, not before the election as President Trump has been pushing. Dr. Anthony Fauci calls this a critical time and says we need to double down on prevention methods. We're talking about implementing some of the important and yet simple public health measures, universal wearing of masks, avoiding close contact, namely physical separation, avoiding crowds in congregate settings, doing things outdoors more than indoors, and hand washing frequently. Those seem very simplistic, but historically we know they can prevent surges and turn things around. At New at Five, with Governor Whitmer's powers halted by the Supreme Court, how will state government respond to a possible new wave of infections? How will the governor and legislature work together? We'll have some answers for you coming up on the News at Five. In 2020, it's very clear the path to the White House runs through Michigan and a handful of other swing states. And at this hour, Democrat Joe Biden is back in Metro Detroit. He's making stops in Southfield and Detroit as he tries to win back Michigan, a state President Trump won by fewer than 11,000 votes in 2016. Biden just arrived in Southfield where he's going to talk about health care. The former vice president just started speaking and we are going to listen in for a bit. Not only shocked us, but it stunned the world. Those words we heard 
You know the reason I decided to run for president, and I know that Debbie knows this. I hadn't planned on running ever again after my son. Okay, and we do apologize for the problems and difficulties that we're having with the audio. That's uh, former Vice President Joe Biden speaking in Southfield tonight. And you can continue watching him if you'd like it. Click on Detroit.com. The event is streaming there live. Plus, uh, Mar McDonald is interviewing the Vice President one-on-one. -on -one. She'll have answers for Metro Detroiters' questions coming up on the news tonight at 6 o'clock. All right, now let's head down to Florida. President Donald Trump just spoke to seniors in Fort Myers about two hours ago. He told the crowd, we're, quote, rounding the turn when it comes to coronavirus, even though numbers are going up in several states. The president did announce a new vaccine partnership to protect seniors from the virus. Today I'm thrilled to announce that we have just finalized a partnership with CVS and Walgreens, two places you know pretty well, I guess to immediately deliver the vaccine directly to nursing homes at no cost to our seniors, no cost. Well, right now we haven't seen details on how that program would work, but we will keep you posted and we will keep trying to get answers. Michigan is seeing a hard fought campaign for U.S. Senate seat, but Senator Gary Peters and challenger John James have not agreed to a single debate, but they have agreed to sit down with our Devin Skillion. You can learn more about both candidates during a special hour-long flashpoint this Sunday morning. It starts at 10 a.m. right here on Local 4. All right, in the first forecast, there's no debate. Uh, we woke up to a frosty morning this morning. Things have warmed up a little bit, though. Let's check in with Andrew. He's in for Ben tonight. Hi there, Andrew. Hey there, Kimberly, and you're exactly right. Temperatures near freezing earlier this morning. A little extra time maybe scraping the uh, frost off the windshield. Chances are we'll do that again, although it is Saturday. Many of us may be able to relax. But a frost advisory in effect for Detroit and all of southeast Michigan overnight and into your Saturday morning. So take heed. Make sure your plants and, pot and uh, pets are safe and comfortable indoors where it's warmer. And right on schedule, as we talked about yesterday, we've got a few showers around, nothing to write home about. A few light showers, mainly in the thumb, a few scattered sprinkles and light showers across south central Michigan, southwest Michigan. That may move over the area, mainly north of 8 Mile and north of Hall Road between now and about 9 p.m. But a lot of those are slowly dissipating. We have cool 50s right now, anywhere from 50 to 55 degrees across most of the area. So where do temperatures go from here? We know they get down close to freezing tonight. We'll talk more about sa Saturday, Sunday, and your next seven days in minutes. Okay, Andrew, uh, now to the continuing story of a COVID survivor we introduced you to a few months ago. He says he got coronavirus in the back of an ambulance as he worked to rescue other COVID patients. While he's on the mend, he says the only way to save people now is through his powerful testimony. Paula Tutman has his emotional follow-up. We're getting better. You know, at first we could barely walk. Today, Avery Garcia has rehab. It's also another day of juggling. Those bowling pins in the air include joy, sheer joy at surviving COVID-19, love and appreciation for his new bride, Juliana. And also in that mix, anger, and frustration. Where did we become so weak as a people that we can't do something so simple as put a piece of cloth over our face? We're not that weak as Americans. Avery spent two months in the hospital in April. 35 of those days was unconscious on a ventilator. He almost died. He returned to say his I do's outside the intensive care unit at Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak in June so that the doctors and nurses who saved his life could bear witness to the miracle of science that saved his life. And three months after his wedding day, he is still fighting the ravages of COVID-19. Sometimes all you can do is get the mail. Sometimes you're just too tired for anything else. The lung damage that COVID does is pretty extensive. You know, when you look at losing 40% of what your lung function is, it's, it's amazing how it runs out at the top of the staircase. Which we're absolutely insurmountable now. Our thing I can do now. As he sees the numbers going up in the state and listens to the science deniers and the anti-maskers, he would be hopping mad, except he doesn't have the strength. When it comes time to do things like open a jar, I'm the one running to her this time. But he does have the will to tell people to take this seriously. If anybody says, I don't need to do that, or I don't want to do that, or it's my right, our rights exist only as, as long as we're not infringing on the rights of, of other people. So my challenge is, are you really that weak 
as to think that you don't have to do your part. Because if you are, that's not very American at all now, is it? It reminds me of the things I was hearing too, where people are like, well, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of COVID? And I'm like, no, I am terrified of hurting someone. It's exhausting because we shouldn't have to dig deep and be angry and be furious to say, do the right thing. Mm, exactly. So it could be at least a year before Avery can even think about going back to work as an EMS technician. He's not able to ride in that truck and save lives anymore, Kimberly. He believes this is his way to save lives, and that is by reaching anybody out there who chooses to believe that this isn't real or serious and hoping they hear his story and take him seriously and just wear a mask. Yeah, what a great, uh, powerful testimony, as you said. Paula, we appreciate you bringing that story to us. All right, still ahead. Have you ever been watching a video online and you see something, maybe a dress or a jacket, you just got to have? Well, we'll talk about an online shopping upgrade in Trending Stories. And a tribute to the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg is coming soon. We'll all have a chance to learn more about her legendary life. We'll explain. But up first... Here's a look at a story defender Karen Drew is working on for Sunday on our 11 o'clock news after the football game. Sometimes the secrets of a small town can make your heart stop. And said, you know, if something ever happens to me, look at him. A local mother reportedly walks into the icy water of Lake St. Clair and kills herself. I believe firmly that this is a murder. But why? She walked in on something, she heard something she shouldn't have known. Signs of a struggle kept quiet. Questionable police practices. You thought the story was over? Just wait.